welcome to our video tutorial on how to build in Bubble for beginners. This video is for people who are brand new to Bubble who want to learn how to navigate the editor, want to learn how the database works, how the styling works, how the workflows work, and you're going to learn by building a basic project along with me. If you want to learn more about Bubble, check out nocode.mba or the link in the description to get all of our in-depth premium courses where you'll learn Bubble by building complex apps like an Airbnb clone or a Reddit clone. Also be sure to subscribe to our channel to continue to get free no-code content in the future. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in the editor of Bubble and this is an empty editor here. So it's a completely empty page and I'm going to walk through some of the different parts of this editor. So here on the left side, we have our um, elements um, buttons here. So this is in the designer tab, we have our elements and we're able to drag elements here onto the page. So this is a text element that I just dragged onto the page. So I can say this is a to-do list um, here. And you can drag in any, um, all of these elements just directly onto your page and uh, it is kind of like what you see is what you get. Um, a WYSIWYG type editor where you're able to actually um, see what it's going to look like in the final product as you're editing. This is different from traditional coding where you are you know, in a code editor, you're writing code, and you have to actually run the code to see what your app is going to look like. So there's a lot of different types of elements you can put onto your page. Um, you can also put different containers such as a group to group different um, elements um, on your page in the way that you want them to. There's input forms uh, such as a normal input, multi-line input, checkbox. Um, you can use this to manipulate data in your app. So we're not going to get through all of the different elements in this video, but just know that there are a lot of different um, types of elements here that you can put onto your bubble app. Um, next we have workflows. We'll get to this in a minute. This is how um, you're able to actually manipulate, manipulate your database. So uh, for example, if you have a to-do list and you add an element to your to-do list, um, that will um, add and uh, manipulate your database. And basically you can have a workflow uh, to do that. You can have workflows for a lot of different complex things in Bubble. And the more that you build in Bubble, the more that you'll learn how you can utilize workflows. Data, this is the data tab where you um, are going to actually build out your database. And there's a lot you can do here, but um, for the basics, that's all you need to understand. Styles, this is how you can set uh, styles in your app that you can use across um, all the pages on your app. Uh, this is really helpful to know how to use, but isn't something we're going to get into in this video. Plugins, again, we may not get into it in this video either, but plugins allow you to add a lot of different functionality into your Bubble app. So for example, um, an API connector, uh, this is a really popular one. You can see how many times it's been um, installed here in Bubble. This allows you to connect with other apps um, such as OpenAI. And we have a, a tutorial on NoCode MBA called Building Apps with AI. And we cover a lot of different use cases of using this API connector um, to, um, to uh, connect with OpenAI and Stable Diffusion, create your own text and image generation apps. Um, and a lot more as well. So that's one use case here of the API connector. And if you're interested, uh, check out No Code MBA for the full in-depth tutorial there. But there's a lot of other um, plugins here that cover a lot of different things. So um, in this tutorial, we're not gonna get into them, but just know that there's a lot of ways you can extend your app using plugins. Settings, um, again, we're not gonna talk too much about settings here in this video, but there's a lot of different customizations to your app um, that uh, you'll learn about the more that you build in Bubble and, and kind of figure out what you need to build. Finally, logs. This is really helpful to know about. So um, first, you'll get your app metrics. So you'll understand your workload in Bubble. Workload is kind of um, basically the metric that you're going to get charged on in Bubble. Um, it's basically uh, a proxy for how um, much you know your app is um, how much energy you know, your app is using essentially uh, to, to run. And that can be increased by more complex workflows and searches and, and things like that. Um, the server logs is, are, are something that's really helpful. You can search your server logs and you're going to be able to um, 
basically try and debug things within your app and view workflows that have been run. So this is something that is good to know exists. Um, finally, um, something to keep in mind here is we are building in the development version of our Bubble app. So you want to think about Bubble, um, there's, there's two different versions. You have a development version and you have a live version of your app. The development version has a totally different um, database. So, so the data types, uh, the structures uh, are going to be the same, but the contents of your database are going to be different for the version test and the live version. So that's why under app data, so here's where you would see the contents of the database. You can switch to your live database and switch to your um, test database. Um, to have your live database, you're going to need to upgrade uh, your app to either a free trial or a paid version of Bubble. But you can learn everything about Bubble or most of the things about Bubble um, using uh, the free uh, test version. So that's just uh, an overview of the different parts of the editor. Again, uh, there's a lot more to learn about Bubble and all of the different things that you can do with it, but this is just a beginner tutorial, so I don't want it to be too overwhelming. Um, okay, so here we are in the editor, and in this tutorial, I'm just going to be using the fixed layout. And fixed layout means we're going to be able to drag everything anywhere we want on the page. It's not going to be mobile responsive, meaning it's not going to look good on a, a phone in addition to a desktop. Um, it, it is a best practice when you are you know, building more serious apps in Bubble to switch to um, row, column, I, uh, are, the, are the most common layouts that you use. If you're familiar with Flex uh, CSS, uh, it's, it's essentially built uh, like that. Um, that's a whole different tutorial that um, I'm not gonna get into here in this video because this is just focused on the uh, beginning understanding of the fundamentals of Bubble. Okay, so we're building a to-do list. Um, so the first thing that I like to do when I'm building a Bubble app is build out our database and figure out our data types. So our new type here is going to be a to-do. So this is going to be, um, if you're familiar with SQL or, or databases, you can think of each data type as a different table in our database. So by default, every Bubble app has a user table, but we also have our to-do table here. And then within our to-do uh, table, we're going to have to create uh, fields in this table. So you press the button, create a new field. The first is going to say maybe text. So we'll just make this a text. Uh, field type, maybe we'll rename it as to do um, item, and this will be a text. So this will be kind of the text such as go for a run or, um, you know, work out or read a book, whatever is on your to-do list. Um, we can create a new field as well. This can be due date, and this can be a date type. So we have our due date, to-do list, to-do item. Let's now have a checkbox, which is going to say completed. And the field type is going to be yes, no. If you're familiar with databases, this is a Boolean. Essentially, it's a yes or no uh, field type. So to do item, due date, completed. Um, and let's see, what else do we need here? I think for our app, this is going to work fine. So to do item, due date, and completed. OK. User, um, uh, yeah, and actually, we don't have to do anything else. The user is automatically going to be connected to the to-do list by the creator. So the creator, whoever creates the to-do, is automatically going to be connected here. OK, so let's go back to our to-do list. And what I want to do, and again, we're not focusing on style here. We're just focusing on function. So if we add S, if we go to the elements, we can search elements. I'm going to search input. I'm going to drag and input here, and I'm going to rename it on the top, input to do. Okay, placeholder type here, that's fine. And then I'm going to create a button, drag it in, and I'm going to name this button um, add task. Okay, so the, the text on the button is going to say add task. Okay, great. And now when on this button, I'm going to click add workflow and this is going to allow us to manipulate our database when we add that task. So I'm gonna click on an action and there's lots of different actions here, uh, but the one we want is create a new thing. 
The type is a to-do. We're going to create a to-do item. Um, let's say the to-do item equals the input to-dos value. The um, completed is going to equal no. And then I want to go back to our designer and let's go ahead and search for a date time picker. Drag that in. Now I'm going to say date time picker due date. So let's make the date format. Uh, let's just say January 15th, 2013. That's fine. Uh, minimum date, let's say current date time. So we can't have a due date that's in the past. Let's also click this input should not be empty. So what this is going to do is it's not going to allow us to add a task until the due date is um, selected. And then here, let's do the same thing under the input and say this input should not be empty. So you click on that input, you get the settings here, and we click this input should not be empty. Okay, so let's go back and edit the workflow. Under this create a new uh, to-do, we're also going to add, oops, not completed, but the due date, and it's going to be the date time picker due dates value. Okay, great. Okay, so we're adding our tasks here. So let's go ahead, actually one more thing, let's click on that workflow. And what I wanna do, it's even if you click uh, add a new action, they're gonna have a recommended next step of resetting relevant inputs. And what that's going to do is clear out these uh, inputs after we add a task. All right, so let's go ahead and click preview here. And it's going to allow us to preview our app. So let's add a to-do list. I'm gonna say go for it, run. And let me show you what happens. If I click add task, it's going to highlight this in red because um, that's what, what checking that button of this uh, input is required or must not be empty um, will do. Let's go ahead and add, um, make it for tomorrow. Okay, so I just added the task. This disappeared, so it looks like nothing happened, but what actually did happen is we added that to do to our database. So let's go take a look at our data tab. Let's go to our app data and here we can see in our to-do list, we see that it is um, in here. Uh, it's not completed. We have a due date, we have the to-do item, and the created date and modified date. Okay, great. So what I wanna do now is display it. So to do that, I'm going to add a repeating group. I'm going to drag it down, and a repeating group allows us to display items from our database and do searches for those items. So what I'm going to do is um, for now, again, we're not going to worry about the style. Um, there's a lot we could do here. Um, but what I want to do is make the type of content a to-do data type here. The data source, we're going to do a search for to-dos. And what we're doing is we're searching for the right data that we want to display in our repeating group. We're going to add, um, we're going to say where completed equals no. And then what we're gonna do is say where, uh, I think that's all. Well, we could say created by equals current user as well if we want. So that way other people could use the app. So completed equals no, uh, created by equals current user. Um, we're not getting into the creating accounts here in this tutorial, um, but uh, actually by default, Bubble will use cookies to know um, you know, if you're in the same browser, it will essentially create a temporary user for you, uh, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now we're going to show all of the to-dos here that are um, uh, completed equals no, created by equals current user. Okay. I'm also going to go ahead and uncheck set a fixed number of rows, so that way it'll show all of the to-do items that we have. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag a text here into our... Um, repeating group and you can see it's showing up in each row of this repeating group so I'm going to delete edit me uh, click insert dynamic data and we're going to say current cells to do's to do item so now it's going to show us the text and I'm just going to drag this over here and make it a little bit larger just in case there's a long, longer to do and again uh, if I were building an app uh, that I that users were going to use and I cared about the design, I would definitely not use the fixed layout. I would change everything to 
uh, flex um, layout to make it responsive and, and make it work much better. But again, that's not the focus of this tutorial. Uh, and if you want to learn more about that, you can check out our full in-depth tutorials on, on no code MBA. Um, and next, what I'm going to do is add a checkbox. I'm going to drag that in. The label, I'm just going to delete that. So I just want it to be a checkbox. Actually, in this case, instead of a checkbox, I'm going to add a button here. Um, so we're just going to add a button. And what I'm going to uh, change the button to say complete. And I'm going to add a workflow, which is going to say make changes to a thing. The thing is going to be the current cells to do. So we're going to make a change to that current cells to do um, uh, completed field. And the completed is going to equal yes. OK. I'm just going to add one more thing. I'm going to add a text inside here. I'm also going to make it really small. I'm just going to make it 10 here on the top right. And I'm going to insert dynamic data by deleting it. And I'm going to say current cells to do's due date. So I just want to show the due date here on the top. OK. So now if I preview the app, here we go. We have our uh, go for a run um, to do that we created. And let's create another one. Let's say we want to, um, uh, let's say, read a chapter in my book today. I'm going to make this do on the 21st. So there we go. We have another to-do list here. Let's do one more, which is going to be clean my house make this for today. And there we go. And there's a lot of things you could do. You could sort by, you know, due date, you could you could do a lot of things. Um, but here, uh, for now, we're just going to show you how to build this simple app. And let's say we want to complete go for a run, we can click that. And now it is removed from the repeating list. And the reason it's removed from the repeating list, I can go back and show you. If we click on that repeating groups to do, we're searching for to do's where completed equals no. So when we clicked complete, we completed it, and it no longer met the uh, filter here uh, for our repeating group, and that's why it no longer showed up. OK, cool. So very cool. If you followed along with this tutorial, you've built a very basic to-do app. You've learned how to um, add elements to your bubble app. You've learned how to um, create a data table and save data to that table. You've learned how to um, you know, just press complete and uh, manipulate that da data and add tasks as well. If you were uh, building with code, this would take much, much longer to understand how to do. This is the magic of Bubble, in my opinion. It's really powerful, really easy to pick up, and um, you know becomes really, really powerful as you uh, continue to build more with it and understand all of the things that it can do. So again, if you want to learn more about Bubble, be sure to check out our full tutorials on No Code MBA. Check out the link in our description. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more free content in the future. If you have any questions at all, please just leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching.